All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about smithing. So I recently started a new playthrough to learn about smithing and pretty much 450 in-game days later and probably 10 hours IRL just smithing, learning everything I need to learn about it. I learned a lot and now I'm here to teach y'all and show you my experience, all the little tips and tricks that I've learned and more. So, um. Also, my next playthrough that I will share will be a pretty much like a greedy playthrough where I try to make the most amount of money through various methods like smithing, just to give you guys a heads up. And uh, also, like always, I have a script. It's going to be on the screen right now, and it's also going to be in description. So everything I say will be in the description. So if you guys want to check out or, you know, check it later and you don't want to rewatch the whole video, it will be down there. Now, so uh, let's get right into it. So when you first start, I suggest you go around and farm looters, sell everything you loot except the weapons. Now, after a couple of days of farming looters, you should have a couple of thousand dinars in a small in a smallish party, probably less than 10 or about 10, right? Now, what I do suggest is you go to Popsia, I think that's what it's called, which is the closest hardwood producing village to the uh, pretty much the starting po uh, point of the game. Uh, and just for reference, uh, late game, the best place for hardwood uh, producing villages is the, and I'm going to get this wrong, I get my pronunciations wrong, right, is the Bat Batanian Kingdom region, especially near Kar Banseth. Alrighty, so let me show you this real quick on the screen. If we go on the screen right now. Alrighty, so when you first start out, uh, you start out at the training field, which is right over here. So you're going to start right over here, your game. And then the uh, the first uh, village, was, which is Popsia, which is the closest hardwood producing village, is right over here. And um, pretty much a village that produces hardwood will have a lot of hardwood to buy from them. It's usually cheap, and they will have a lot more than a town. So if you need a lot of hardwood and you need it quick, these are the best places to get it. Now, um, and in terms of late game, as you can see, it's pretty close. I checked all the other ones. They're not, they don't produce hardwood. Now, in terms of late game, I suggest you stick around this area because there is so many villages that produce hardwood. And I stated this town because as you can see, there is two villages right next to each other that produce hardwood. And I'm pretty sure there's another one down here. Yep, right over here. And there's probably, I think there's like two more over here as well. They're very close together and you can get up to like 600 wood right away if you just visit uh, the villages, this town, and uh, let's say this village and this town, you'll get about 500 to 600 hardwood. So it's very good for late game in my opinion. Now let's go back to early game. So you go to um, this town right here, not this town, this uh, village right here, which is right over here you buy some hardwood and now it's time to visit a town so in the town choose the smithy and refine some of the hardwood for charcoal then once you have charcoal start smelting like crazy this will give you a lot of starting materials and ores so uh let me show you exactly what i mean any town has a smithy but pretty much here's how you get to it you enter the town it's this option right here you enter smithy and then pretty much if you have weapons you can smelt them, but they all take charcoal. So that is why you need the hardwood. So if you go to refine, as you can see, this is the one you will start out with if you have uh, pretty much zero in smithing, which you will have in the beginning. So you're gonna be able to do two hardwood for one charcoal. And to forge any weapons or to smelt any weapons, you do need charcoal. So you're gonna have to, you know, get a little bit of wood if you wanna smelt the weapons that you have collected. And uh, when you smelt weapons, they do give you uh, materials back. And um, what's it called? Wooden hammers and pitchforks are the best when it comes to hardwood Hardwood early on. And uh, you get them uh, from looters mainly. And um, other cheap weapons will give you hardwood, crude iron, and raw iron. So pretty much weapons, let's say, some weapons from looters will give you that. If, if like, let's say a looter drops a sword but uh sea raiders and mountain bandits drop swords and um throwing objects and stuff of that nature that will give you iron pretty much the different types of iron right the crude and raw now um the next four materials which are iron steel fine steel and i'm gonna get this one wrong again 
The masking, I, I can't say. I'm going to say T. We're going to go with T steel. Are very hard to get. Their um, more expensive weapons can be smelt to provide one or two of each of the hard to get materials. And uh, pretty much remember this. Uh, when we start talking about smithing parts, which is a little bit down, uh, a little bit down the line. So, if you go on the screen right now, I'm talking about um, right here: iron, steel, fine steel, and uh, T steel. These are very hard to get. These are very easy to get, and so is hardwood. It's also very easy to get in charcoal. But these four right here, these are the hard ones to get, and I'm going to explain to you why in a little bit. Now, for the um, for the first perk that you should get in my opinion is uh, efficient charcoal maker which is uh, the perk that you will it's pretty much two perks that you can select at level 25 one can um, let's go to the perks right now just to show you right over here so we got efficient charcoal maker which pretty much um, gives you a better return on charcoal whenever you uh, what do you call it whenever you refine some hardwood and then the other one is efficient iron maker but when we're talking about efficiency this is the best one in my opinion so um why i think it's the best in my opinion is because it's used for almost everything charcoal is super 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 important right and uh it's pretty much your fuel to do anything when it comes to smithing and uh getting better value from charcoal early on and late game right will save you a lot of money and it's, and it's just, you know, it's going to save you a lot more time roam, roaming around the map, finding more hardwood to turn into charcoal. So this is a must-have perk as a first one, in my opinion. Um, so this pretty much gives you the ability to refine three charcoal out of two hardwood. And without the perk, your basic conversion is two hardwood, hardwood for one charcoal. Also, this um, using this perk will give you a lot more XP and help you level up a lot faster. So if we go back to uh, the screen right now, and we go to enter smithy, go to refine. So this is the basic one that I talked about you get from the start. Once you have the perk, you will gain this one. And as you can see, it is a lot, a lot better. So it's a must have in my opinion. Now a quick talk on stamina. Every character has a hundred. There are perks to cut down the stamina cost of certain smithing functions that we are gonna talk about uh, later on in this video. Also, uh, smithing uh, regenerates when you wait in a town, so it takes pretty much a full in-game day of waiting to replenish 100 stamina. Now, um, so after you get this perk, I suggest you continue fighting looters, and then when your army gets a little bit bigger, I will say around 20 to 30 good upgraded troops, I will suggest you go and fight sea raiders and mountain bandits. They both provide you with more expensive weapons, like I said, some swords and throwing weapons, right? And pretty much better than looters. Plus, you'll get more dinars and loot that you can sell, like armors and all the other stuff they carry. You can sell that for a good amount of dinars. Uh, forest bandits are not worth it, in my opinion, because they only drop bows when it comes to weapons. If you see a big group and you want to fight them just for the loot, you can, you know, play how you wish, right? But in terms of uh, weapons to smith, they don't really drop them. And uh, for Mountain Bandits and Sea Raiders, they are very active in the starting uh, Vlandian and Sturgeon Kingdoms. So if we go on the map again, if you want to find a lot of them, uh, I'll show you exactly where they kind of roam. So they roam in this area heavily, Sea Raiders, and there are some Mountain Bandits and some Forest ones. That, there's Forest Bandits down here. Now in terms of this location, best spot for Sea Raiders is right over here, and there's a crevice right over here. This this base right here, you can um, pretty much squeeze them in. And uh, they will all gonna, they're pretty much all going to attack you once you reach their hideout. And you can get this big battle in, get a lot of loot. It's a good experience and all of that, right? But um, pretty much in this general area, and in this general area, you will find uh, good groups of sea raiders and mountain bandits. But, you know, they could also be located here. But if you're looking for the big amounts, that's where you got to go. Now, um... Now, in terms of perks, as you level up, I suggest, so pretty much this is, um, like I said before, you have to remember because we're going to talk about perks. This is the perks section. So um, in terms of perks that you have to level up, I suggest getting all three steel makers because they give you the ability to create steel, fine steel, and T-steel, which without these perks cannot be done or refined and have to be obtained from smelting high-tier weapons. 
Um, for the other later perks, I suggest Practical Refiner and Practical Smith, and that's pretty much a must-have in my opinion. Now, let's uh, go into here and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, all the steel makers, you can see this is the first one. It lets, you uh, it lets you create one unit of steel with other materials, right? Then uh, Steelmaker 2 allows you to create one unit of fine steel. And then Steelmaker 3 gives you uh, T-Steel. So these are very important because the only other way you're going to get them is if you want to smelt very high tier weapons. And that's a very slow process. So I think these are very worth it. And you're, you're going to see I don't have it right now, but I'm going to show you exactly why I don't have it on this character. I'm going to show you exactly why in just one second. So, uh, and then the other two that I talked about was the, it was pretty much the Practical Refiner. Okay, Practical Smith, which uh, stamina spent for smithing is half, which is insane. It's very good. It gives your character a lot more uh, things that he can do in a day's worth of stamina. And then we have, which is the Practical Refiner which should be actually over here there we go and this is stamina spent for refining is halved which if you have both of these refining is going to be a piece of cake right so now um if you already missed one of the steelmaker perks or others i have listed or as you can see on the screen right now how i've missed this one it's okay because you can still get them so smithing can pretty much be done with companions that you have in your party uh these companions can learn smithing perks and i have an exploit well, it's not my exploit, right? But I guess other people found it in the past, but I haven't seen it on any like other, you know, videos that I've seen, right? So pretty much this exploit lets you use one of your character's perks for all of your other characters and companions, right? So um, before we get to that exploit and all that, let's talk about companions. In my opinion, the type of companion does not really matter. Yes, there are some which are better at smithing, but they already have perks selected. Let's say if there are 100 smithing, they're already gonna have the first four perks selected. So if you if your main character has the same ones as your companion, there's no point in really getting that companion because you want to have, you know, diverse uh, what do you call them perks. So let's say your uh, if we go on the screen right now, if you it, let's say your main character has this one right, efficient charcoal maker, but you also want this skill. Well, as you can see, my companion, the second guy right here, he has the ones I'm missing. So this is pretty much how I'm able to use pretty much every perk that I want is because I put some on my companion side, some on my main character side, and uh, all together, I have all the perks pretty much. Um, well, all the perks that give you um, better advantages to making certain materials, right? So now, uh, to level up companion perks, if you did not know, uh, you go to your character screen like I am right now, and all you do is you scroll through your characters with the arrows listed above right here, above the name. And uh, as you can see, if they're in your party, you'll be able to uh, pretty much pick a perk for them, right? If they're not in your party, because I'm pretty sure I have one guy who's not in my party, see, you're not going to be able to pick any of his perks. And now, all items smelted and forged and refined all end up in your inventory regardless of what companion you use. So it's uh, there's no reason to like, go in between companion and companion companions right that it's all going to be based in your inventory stuff will be taken out of your inventory and stuff will be put back into your inventory so it's very simple in terms of you know where does all the materials and where all the weapons go uh now to use companions all you really have to do is click on the avatar of your character in the bottom left of the screen then pick the companion you wish to use so if we go to the smithing window right over here oh sorry that's not the smithing window uh, let's go to a town, enter smithy. As you can see right over here, you can see his stamina, his smithing skill. Now if you click it, boom, all your other companions pop up. And you can pretty much choose whoever you want. And um, as you can see, let's say this guy runs out of smithing stamina. I can choose the next character who has 100. Then the, if this guy runs out, then I can choose this character. Then if this character runs out, I can choose this. And it pretty much keeps going, right? Now, here's the exploit. If you have a character with a perk that the other characters in your party do not have, let's say like efficient charcoal maker, you can still use that perk to you can still use that perk ability for all your characters, even the ones who don't have that perk. So here's how you do it. So first you choose the character with the perk and then choose the ability. Now if you switch to another character and you don't click on any new ability, 
the previously selected perk will still be selected and you can use your new character's stamina to perform another character's ability. So here, here I'm gonna show you right on the screen right, right now. Um, so what we're gonna do is, let's say this guy, he has all of these as you can see. And we're gonna use one that's like, you know, the efficient charcoal maker is kind of an earlier one. So I'm gonna show you exactly. So this guy has 321 smithing skill and this guy right here has zero smithing skill. And uh, to get this perk, if we go back real quick, that's uh, Steel Maker Three, as you can see. It requires you to have a hundred levels, so he, so this companion can't have it at all because he literally has zero smithing. So if we enter the smithy, we go to refine, we have our main character selected, we choose this, which is you know, the hundred uh, smithing a hundred level perk, uh, what's it called ability. Now, if we quickly switch, we don't have to quickly, but like if we switch to this guy who has zero smithing, as you can see, it's still selected. Even though it's not on the screen right now, if we don't click anything here and it's still selected, if I click refine, as you can see, it will use his stamina, but you're still going to um, use the ability that your main character has. So I thought it was a very cool feature once I found it. And this pretty much helps you, like, let's say you want to use the efficient uh, charcoal what's called ability, right? And you want to use this for all your characters because obviously you don't want to switch to this guy. Uh, hold on, which one doesn't have it? You don't want to switch to this guy and then have to do this recipe, right? So let's say all you have to really do is choose this for your main character. You can refine, refine, refine for your main character. Once he's out of stamina, choose the next one, hit refine, refine, refine. It's going to keep it there. Then you can choose even the next character and it's going to stay there until you choose another uh, ability so keep that in mind i think it's very useful especially for late game where you have to you know go from this from this crude iron all the way to steel you know you're going to spend a couple days just smithing and smithing and smithing and it's very good to have these uh shortcuts you know like the like this one right here and uh there's another one i'm pretty sure yeah like this guy he has more shortcuts right now let's talk about what to forge and how to make huge amounts of dinars from smithing. So if you did not already realize, uh, javelins are insanely expensive in the game and that's pretty much our end game goal, to get enough parts to craft expensive javelins and then sell them. Now here's where luck comes in. Since javelins are so expensive, the parts are hard to get. It's a very low chance and uh, you know, it's gonna take you a couple tries, but you can get lucky to get them early. Uh, luckily, also, all you need is a handle and a blade to craft a javelin. There's four parts that you can put to a javelin, uh, pretty much four part slots, but you only need um, the handle and the blade. Uh, the problem is the handle parts are extremely rare, so if you do not get lucky at the start, like I said before, you will have to start with forging one-handed weapons until you finally learn enough javelin parts. Uh, by the way, forging is one of the best ways to learn parts. The higher the tier of a weapon you craft, the more smithing XP you will gain and parts you will get. Sometimes if you craft a very high tier weapon, you might get more than one, one two, or even three par uh, parts learned. Now on the forging screen, so uh, you're going to see a bar with the smithing and difficulty um, on the left side. And in my opinion, they don't really do much. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't really have much of an impact for me during my playthrough. Um, but pretty much the, the higher the difficulty, if pretty much if the difficulty is higher than the smithing level, then the weapon will come out worse and cost less and probably do less damage and all of that. But that's not what we're looking at. We're just looking at, you know, the profits that we can possibly make. But in terms of if you just want to make profit, it's, it's not a real big problem, right? Even, even if the difficulty is way higher than the smithing, it's not a big problem, in my opinion. Uh, also, in terms of the size bar, Cranking it all the way up won't make the price go up as well. I barely touch it, but um, I've tried it out, pretty much putting it all the way up and putting it all the way down and uh, with the same parts, right? And they came out to pretty much the same price. But if you want to craft yourself a long weapon to use, then go crazy, you know, you can go do it. Now, to select weapons, you can click on the box on the top right of the screen and choose what you want to forge. I just stuck with one-handed and javelins since one-handed plans drop frequently and you can start making them early and javelins are the end game. So I always check if I can finally have parts to make a javelin. Now uh, before we move on, let's just talk about everything, let's just show everything that I just talked about. So here's your smithing and difficulty right over here. 
like I stated, it's not a huge problem. These guys can still, you know, like even this guy, he can still, I'm pretty sure, craft this if we have the right materials. Let's go to javelins. Uh, let's say one of these. Let's go to this guy. Right over here, as you can see, he can still forge it. And the accuracy is not even bad. You know, so I never really had a problem with this. He gained 63 skills from that one craft. That's crazy. Okay, let me... Well, my bad. Let's get back to it. So uh, the size is right over here. Like I stated, it doesn't really do much in terms of price. Yeah, the difficulty gets risen, but price, there's not much of a difference in my opinion. And then for weapon selection, you just click on this and you can pretty much pick what you want to pick. You can try all these other ones out, but pretty much I found one-handed swords for the beginning and then uh, javelins for the end game is the best way to go. Now, uh, in terms of parts, they go up in tiers. Some have special stats and armor boosts, but if you're going for just the profit, like I said before, it doesn't really matter. As a rule of thumb, the higher the tier, the more XP you will get, the more plans you will learn, and the more expensive the weapon will be. So uh, if you look on the screen again, I guess we can see for one-handed sword, it, it's literally like, you know, these are gonna cost less because they're all the way at the top, they're tier one. These tiers are going to cost more, right? They are going to cost more materials, but you're going to get a greater return on your investment. Now, here's a picture to represent the different tiers of uh, crafted one-handed swords. I'm also going to show you um, crafted javelins, and you're going to see the price differences. So uh, each sword used in this picture is pretty much the first available part of each tier. So uh, the first one is all, so the top one is all tier, it's an all tier one sword with all tier one parts. And at the bottom is an all tier 5 with all tier 5 parts. And uh, it goes tier 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And you can see pretty much how the price goes up depending on the tier. Now, javelins are more, are more complicated since they have less parts. And some parts only have 2 to 3 tiers. So if you look at the uh, screen right now, as you can see, one-handed sword, there's, for each part that you need, there's... Uh, abundance of stuff that you can learn that's why the plans drop more frequently but if we go to javelin as you can see um, for the top it has a good a good selection then for these there's only three there's only three with one being nothing and uh, for for handles there's only five and again for the bottom part which is the pummel uh, you can choose none or you can choose two different varieties now here's the tier uh, list picture of javelins where the first one is the most basic one that you can make with uh, the tree branch as a handle and the first tier one blade. The second is a mid game one that utilizes mostly tier three, tier, uh, three parts and the last one um, utilizes end game tier four and tier five parts. So as you can see the price it drastically increases uh, whenever it comes to javelins. Now, if you're already not convinced on the Javelin, here's another great thing about them. They are super cheap to make, super cheap to make, where even the top tier Javelin only needs steel, hardwood, and charcoal. I'm pretty sure it's about three to four steel, but now let's compare this to the one-handed example, right? A tier five crafted one-handed weapon needs three to four fine steel, three to four T-steel, and one charcoal. And the result, as you saw, was way cheaper than the Javelin. Now, if we go on the screen, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So, uh, if you go to one-handed swords, as you can see right here, let's go uh, pick the first tier 5 that we have available right over here. Uh, first tier 5 that we have available over here. Uh, it's just to pretty much replicate the sword that I made uh, for the list that you saw, or the picture that you saw. Where is it? Right over here and right over here. As you can see, this one's gonna take four fine steel, three T steel, and one charcoal to make. And it's gonna yield us um, pretty much, if I go back to the picture so I can see exactly how much it is, about 13,000. Obviously, it can go up and down, it can fluctuate if you use different parts or if you go all the way to the end game parts, but that's pretty much what you're about to get. Uh, for pretty much using some of the high materials. Now, in terms of javelin, here's the crazy thing. So, um, 
if we go to the all as close as we can get, which is tier four, we got another tier four. This is the best, uh, sh uh, what's it called, handle that we can get. And now tier four uh, pummel. As you can see, all you need is four steel, one hardwood, and one charcoal. And as you can see from the other picture that I showed, it's going to cost about 100k, which is insane because then you don't even have to create these two other um, expensive you know, materials. Now, here's another cool thing that I found. The best javelin to make in terms of using the least amount of materials and getting the best deal is pretty much here's how it goes. All you need is a tree branch handle, which is the tier two, and you need an imperial simple spearhead, which is also tier two. And um, you don't need a pummel, and you don't need the, uh, the thing that goes between the blade and the uh, handle. You just need the handle and the, uh, the, top, uh, the, the top blade. Uh, both are very low tier, but they produce javelins that range from 25 to 35K a piece. And, um, and all you have to do and all you have to use in terms of materials is one raw iron, one hardwood and one charcoal, which is super, super cheap. And then you'll in return get 25 to 35K. So uh, here's exactly what I mean. So we're going to use this one right here, which is the Imperial Simple Spearhead, just here too. We're going to take this off. We're going to uh, keep this. Oh, no, we're going to go to the tree branch, which is uh, tier two. It's the worst one you can get pretty much. And you go to none for this. And uh, as you can see, one raw iron, one hardwood, and one charcoal. Now, before we craft this, just so you can see, uh, we're going to go to trade. Once it lets us. Uh, as you can see, I got quite a bit of uh, javelins, right? But here's what I want you to focus on. So the ones we're going to focus on, the ones that go from 25 to 35K are these ones right here. As you can see right now, I have four of these by the picture that are the same. And these are the ones that I'm talking about right now in my example. So I'm going to craft one more and it's going to have the same picture and there's going to be five then. And you're going to see that it, it, that's pretty much how much you're going to get. Uh, so we're going to enter Smithy. We're going to go to Forge, uh, Javelin. Choose that one, choose nothing for this, choose uh, the tree branch, choose nothing for this. Uh, don't change the side, don't change anything. Forge. And now if we look back, go over here to our javelins. As you can see, now we have five of these crafted ones. And as you can see, we got another 26K out of one raw iron, one hardwood and one charcoal, which is in Insane. So, uh, in my opinion, this is the best one to craft because the materials is super inexpensive. The plans are super inexpensive, and you know, yeah, it's not a hundred k, but guess what? You can make a lot more of these in terms of pretty much for the materials that you have than these. And these are a lot easier to uh, sell since they cost less, and towns usually don't have you know a hundred k. Now, in terms of selling, I go to towns and I sell javelins, and most of the time the town can't afford it. So what I do is I buy all the town's horses, all its hardwood and expensive gear until they're pretty much even. And I also uh, sell to other lords because not only do they have dinars, but when you do a successful barter with other lords, you will gain reputation and charm um, once the barter is done. And... Um, Again, like I said before, I put the javelins in the barter screen, then I take all the lords, dinars, and gears. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So let's say uh, this town only has 17,000. I'm going to give them one of my javelins, which is 100K. Uh, I'm going to go through, take everything that I want until um, pretty much, you know, I get my value. So I can take all the good gear that I want. Uh, let's find the hardwood. Hardwood is always good to have, so always take it. Uh, and as you can see, all my all my boys are kitted out all of them are kitted out well not this guy because he's just a traitor but um everybody in my squad is kitted out because this is exactly what i've been doing right so we're going to take all the good boots all uh everything that's pretty much good and then we're going to resell it to other towns that you know once we run out of javelins which we usually will never but you know just in case now as you can see they started uh started to get money again so let's just give them something over here boom and we are fine yeah yeah that's fine 
And as you can see, you got all their money, plus you got all these uh, new expensive things in your inventory that you can also trade or put on uh, companions and other characters. Now, in terms of uh, lords, you go up to any lord and you can uh, start a barter. The rulers and um, the lords are more fiefs, usually carry more uh, dinars on them, you know, but um, I sell to all of them because trust me, these, these javelins are not hard to make, especially the 30k one, the 25 to 30k one that I showed you that takes one wrought iron, one hardwood, and one charcoal. Very simple to make. So um, this is what I like to discuss. Pros of the benefits of both of us. He has 5,000. We'll take all his items, right? Uh, we can even take one of these 30k ones, right? Is that the 30k one? No, it's not. Uh, these are the 30k one. And boom. We're going to get all his money. Uh, hold on. Let's get all his money for one of the 30k javelins. We got all his ponies, everything else. Offer, as you can see, relationship increase. And you gain a skill point in charm. Very simple. Now, uh, one one last thing that is currently a bug um, that has to do with smithing. So there's a bug. When, once you research the uh, level 2 uh, 175 perk for smithing, the next time you load in, the perk might be replaced by Siege Master, which is an engineering perk. Don't be alarmed because the 2000, uh, I said 2000, 275 uh, level smithing perk does not currently work. So you're not missing out on anything. And actually the engineering perk that you do get, it does work. So it is what it is. You can see it happened to my main character as well. Go to smithing. Uh, once I loaded it back in, as you can see, it says siege expert. And um, previously it did have the smithing perk, which if we go to, uh, I guess it switched for every single character, which is unfortunate because I can't show you the past perk. But uh, the past perk pretty much gave you, uh, I think it's a 5%. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. 5% chance to craft a legendary weapon. That's not currently in the game. But yeah, so you're not really missing out on anything. But okay, guys, hopefully this helps. I know it's going to be a long video. It took me a long time to make, a long time to play to uh, make sure I get all the details out to you guys. But that's pretty much what I learned. That's how to do it. You know, I know a lot of people talk about it on the forums and stuff like that. And some people don't know how to start or where to go or how the process works. But hopefully this explained it to you. You know, like I said, the script will be down below. If you guys want to read exactly, you know, what I've wrote down. So, uh, yeah. Like I said before, hope it helps. And like always, stay safe.